word of men, but as in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Father, the grace to receive your word as your word, not as a man's word. Father, the grace to receive your word. Lift up your voice. Father, in the name of Jesus, we obtain grace by the power of the Holy Ghost to receive your word this morning. To receive your word this morning with power. To receive your word this morning from the mouth of your servant, Mata Bariate Zeboa. Rebeshe Brekata Sabalagua. Rebeshe Breskete. Ega balagata sabradige sobregedia. Rebede bede de bede. Pray that prayer, Lord, the grace to receive your word. Lika pariate sebre. Jeke tosco branda gataya. Ella praga tosco brega de bede de bede. Lord, the grace to receive your word this morning. Lika pariate sebe. Jeke de brega de bede de bede. That no word shall fall to the ground in my life. No word shall be missing in my life from being fulfilled. Mata. Pariate se bregade, el lebrega de bede de bede, e shabraska tabala gadea, rebe de bede de bede de bregade, e shebreke tosca balaga da braga da bada da bada. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and in verse 8, it says, Let thy garments be always white and, la- and thy head lack no ointment. Father, this morning, as I worship you, cause me to encounter your anointing. Let me encounter your anointing in the course of the worship, in the course of the prayer. Lord, let my head lack no ointment this morning. This is a new week. Lift up your voice. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that in the course of the worship, let there be the release of your anointing upon our head heads that our heads shall lack no ointment this morning for this new week oh god we pray that as your servant will be teaching your word in the worship session in the prayer session lord that you release an anointing upon our heads that our heads will lack no ointment you say my head shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn and my head shall be anointed with fresh oil in the name of jesus i pray that i will encounter an anointing for my destiny this this morning as i worship you as I I receive your word as I pray. Le capariata zata bragada. Rebeshe brekete bede de bede. Le capariata zata el boscataya. Rebe de bede de bede. E jabarianda sata. Rebe de bede de koto bregadia. Ma chapras ke letos ke bea. Rebe de bede de bede de bede de bede. E jibragata zala bragada bada da badia. Rebe de geso bregade bede de bede. E jikaparata zata la bagadi bragadia. Rebede sobrende shkabala gadia, rabala gada bada dagadia, lebrega debede, eshebrega debede degade brega debede, ella braga ta sabrande keto sobrea, jekete brega debede debede degade, eliko sobranda sabala gada bragadia, rebe sobrekete bede de brega debede debede, e kaparanda sabalia to sobrea, jekete brega debede debede gade brega de. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Bible speaking in the book of Job, Job chapter 38 and in verse 3. He said, But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. The breath of the Almighty. Lord, this morning, breathe afresh upon my understanding. Grant me understanding of your word. Lift up your voice and make that your prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the course of this service, as we'll be worshiping, as we'll be praising you, as we'll receive your word, we pray that you breathe afresh upon our understanding. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, O oh God. Cause your word to come through unto us. Let the veil on our understanding be lifted right now. now. As we receive your word, grant us access into the mysteries of your kingdom. Ibragata baladaya, rebede sobrege de bede de bede, ejikata bragada bada da bada, rebet sebre de go sobranda, rabasha kate sebrege de, rebe sebrege to sobrea, embata sabragataya, jabragata ze de bede de brega de bede. Lord, open our understanding this morning, as your servant will be breaking the bread shortly. We pray that our understanding be enlightened, O God. Mashi braga te bede de bede, rebe she brega de bede de bede de gede, ele brega de bede de brega de bede de bede, jege de brega de bede de bede de brega de, le braska tabada gada braga da bada braga da bala gada. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Job chapter twenty nine and in verse two and three, he say, Oh, that I weigh as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me, when His candle shine upon my head. 
and when by his light I walk through darkness. Father, this morning, grant me access to light, illumination this morning, as your servant will be teaching your word, enlighten my candle. The Bible says that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Lord, breathe afresh upon my spirit and grant unto me the spirit of revelation. Lift up your voice. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that servant will be teaching us, your servant will be preaching your word, that you light our candle, O God, and you cause the entrance of your word to bring light unto us. As we receive your word this morning, let light flow, let light flow, let light flow. You say that the eye of the body is the, uh, the, the, the light of the body is the eye. Lord, we pray that you enlighten our darkness this morning by the preaching of your word and you grant unto us access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Lord, we pray that you give us the spirit of revelation this morning in this service. Mantabaria de Zeletos Cabraya, Rebeche Brege de Bede de Bede, La Pariata Zataya, La Bragadesh, Rebe de Bede de Brege de Bede de Bede, Lika Shabranda Zataya, La Bragadesh. Rebe de bede de brega de bede de bede e la zata barato zo bregadia jege de brega de bede de bede de brega de e caparata zalata bragos rebe de bede de brega de bede de bede e gabarega sabragadi de brega de bede de bede e se brega de bede de brega de lega de bede i casa braga taza balaga da braga da e shike de brega de bede de bos in the name of Jesus we are praying Lord fill me afresh with your spirit as I worship you this morning. Bible in the book of Acts chapter 2 and in verse 4 he said and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost Lord as I worship you this morning feel me afresh let me encounter your spirit afresh lift up your voice and make your prayer Lord this morning as I worship you feel me afresh with your power feel me afresh with your spirit I want to encounter your spirit in this service as I worship you Mata Bariates de Lea Rebeche Braca Tosca Bala Rebe de Bede de Belege de Bregede Ejica Parianda Sade le bregade, e she breke tosco balagada bragada, rezete bedi le bregadeas. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Can you lift up your voice and give God thanks for answering our prayers this morning? We give you glory and praise. Lift your voice and give Him glory wherever you go. Bless His name, glorify His name wherever you are. Rise to your feet, lift up your voice to Him, give Him all the praise. He deserves it. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. He deserves the adoration. Just wave your hands to him wherever you're standing and give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Say something to him because he deserves it today. Hallelujah. 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 Give him praise. Anytime I call you answer. Any door I knock, you open. You are incredible, God. Incredible, God. Incredible, God. You are incredible, God. Incredible, God. Incredible, God. Impossibility, 
for the privilege to be alive, the privilege to wake up and see a brand new day, the privilege to see a new week. Can you lift up your voice from your home, wherever you're connected, wherever you're watching this online service? Just show God gratitude. Let God know you are grateful. Let God know you are grateful. Thank Him. Bless His name. I want you to thank Him for the gift of good health. I want you to thank Him for the gift of His Son, Jesus. Thank Him for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank Him for the gift of His divine presence. Thank Him for the privilege for us to host the presence of God in our lives. The Bible says for our body is a temple of the Lord where his spirit lives. Can you give God praise? Thank him for last week. The thing that the Lord helped you to achieve. The thing that the Lord did for you last week. Thank God. Give him praise for preservation. Give him praise for protection. Give him praise for favor. Give him praise for the help that you enjoy. Give him praise for the provisions. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we thank you. What a mighty God we serve. Glorious God you are. Hakabo shele prendo saparadi. E koto da babo saparadi kadora bredi koto stada bredia. Just worship, just pray in the Holy Ghost for a few minutes. Call of Rida Kos Kabrada Dios Kabredios. Jada Brigados Kabradi do Kabaro de Kadabrigados Kabredi Koto da Brigadiza. Jela de Brigados Kadabere Brigados Kadabere Brigados Kabadadi. Jata Tabreba de Gabosca, the Debeba de Gabosca, the Bereba de Gadi, Jaca Toda Bredicos, Cabridicos, Sapara de Cato de Debeba do Satia, Shella de Bereba dos, the Debeba de Gabosca, the Bereba de Gabosca, Jaca Toda Bredicabosca, the Debeba de Gabosca de Gadi, Lepo Cotosa Breba de Tabreba dos, Cabreba de Gabosca Bredicadi, O Calabrida Cona Baracilla Carabidos, Calabredicos, Alabredica. Leveridicos, a leveridicus, a veridicus, a veridicity, a leveridicus, a veridicus, 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 a Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you. We give you praise for the gift of life. We give you praise for the gift of good health. We give you praise for the gift of another Sunday morning. We give you praise for the gift of another week. We give you praise for the gift of your son Jesus the gift of the Holy Spirit the privilege to house to host your divine presence we thank you Lord for your mercies we thank you for your mercies it is because of your mercies that we are not consumed great is your faithfulness we thank you Lord for your provisions we thank you for your preservation your protection in the week that just passed we thank you for every help that you helped us we thank you for divine intervention Lord, we thank you for the sin battles you fought for us. We thank you even for the unseen battles, numerous unseen battles. The arrows that di you diverted, we were not aware of. The things that you helped us to go through that we were not even aware of. Lord, the snare of the fowler that was broken, that you caused us to escape. Father, we give a praise. We thank you for food on our table, clothes on our body. Thank you for shelter. Thank you, Lord, for connection. Thank you for relationship. Thank you for friends. Thank you for the privilege of accessing the secrets of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom. Thank you for your word. Thank you, mighty God, for victory. Victory. We give you praise. Blessed be your name. Mighty God, this morning, in this online service, we just ask that your spirit will move. We just ask for the outpouring of your spirit. 
we ask lord that you will open our heart to receive your counsel open our ears to hear your voice let nothing prevent our blessings let nothing prevent our access to your voice in the mighty name of jesus we thank you lord because the, the heaven of this place is open and there is access between here and heaven and between heaven and this place we thank you for the ministry of angels lord we thank you for the ministry of the angels even upon your people in their homes wherever they are connected they are watching the ministry of the holy spirit that will touch them lord with you there is no distance lord this morning we are looking up to you to heal the sick we're looking up to you to set captives free we're looking up to you to give somebody new vision, to give somebody direction, to take away confusion, to take away weakness, take away sickness, take away pain in the name of Jesus. Father, we look up to you to intervene against demonic attack, demonic plots, demonic tokens and counsel, demonic projections and manipulation. Let them scatter by fire. Let them scatter by fire. Let them scatter by fire. Lord, we ask that this week we will experience more victories. We experience more mercy, more grace, more favor, more provisions, more help, more testimonies that will walk in dimensions of revelation that surpass that of last week. Dimensions of favor, of glory that will surpass that of last week. In the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. We pray against interference, interruption, distraction of any kind in this online service. And let your people be blessed. Let be testimonies. In Jesus' name we have prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Please you may be seated. Uh, welcome to our testimony service. This wonderful Sunday morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to believe the Lord has been good to you. I want to believe you have seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I want to believe everyone. Everyone connected watching part of this service that god has been good to you i want to believe you have a testimony now, now that you are alive is a testimony on its own so you can you can ignore that fact you can but appreciate the fact that being alive is a miracle is a testimony amen so we like for you to connect and share the service with friends and like and leave a comment as you receive the word as you get blessed and if you have a testimony also do let us know you can leave it in the place of a comment so the media people will be able to pick it out and we can share with God's people let the Lord be glorified and let the faith of the people be strengthened hallelujah I say hallelujah this morning we want to get into God's word take your writing material take your Bible we want to look again at the secret of divine mercy the secret of divine mercy the secret of the mercies of God the secret of the mercies of God the secret of divine mercies hallelujah now the first secret we saw last Sunday we said is to acknowledge your sin acknowledge your sin acknowledge your fault acknowledge your wrongdoing David enjoyed mercies from God because he acknowledged his sin, he acknowledged his fault. In First Chronicles chapter 21, when he counted Israel, God was angry. Please, it's not understanding divine mercy. I said it is the secret of divine mercy. So David acknowledged his sin when he was confronted by prophet God. That's First Chronicles chapter 21. And then you moved on to... Uh, second Samuel chapter 11 when he, he, he committed adultery with, with Bathsheba and went further trying to cover that, that scene by killing Uriah the husband of Bathsheba you know with the letter he gave to Uriah to take to the army commander Dua. and so Uriah was set up to be killed and God now sent prophet Nathan to confront David and David did not make excuses. David did not, you know, uh, blame somebody. David accepted that he was wrong. And he asked God for mercies. And God showed him mercies. And then you can see him, you know, praying the prayer of repentance in Psalm 51. The popular Psalm 51 that we all know. David acknowledged his sins. Praise the Lord. Now the second secret of the 
mercy of God. We saw that on Wednesday was what? The ministry of prayers. The ministry of prayers. Now we started on Wednesday and I would like to conclude on that this morning and then share with you uh, one, one of the wonders of the mercies of God as we conclude the service. The ministry of prayer. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. If the mercy of God is your desire, then you must be prayerful. If the mercy of God is your desire, then you must be prayerful. If the mercies of God is important to you, then you must be prayerful. If you don't want to be consumed because you are a, 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 a beneficiary of the mercies of God, then you must be what? You must be prayerful. Somebody shout hallelujah. He said, let us come therefore, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. He said, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. The throne of grace is the place of prayer. The throne of grace is the ministry of prayer. And I called it ministry of prayer because it's not just an act. It's not just what we do once in a while. It's a lifetime assignment. It's a covenant duty. It's a covenant assignment. Because prayer is fellowship with God. And you can't be a child of God and God is your heavenly father and you are not in fellowship with him. You're not in fellowship with him. You're not in talking terms with God. Anyone you're not in talking terms with, it means the relationship is bad. Somebody shout hallelujah. Anyone you are not in talking terms with frequently, it means the relationship is sour, the relationship is bad. So for those of us that play with prayers, those of us that don't take prayer serious, I just want you to understand that you are not in talking terms with God. I just want to simplify it to make you understand and appreciate the fact that you are keeping malice with God. And can you imagine you're keeping malice with somebody that has all you need? Can you imagine you're keeping malice with somebody that has what you require for success? The help you require, the favor you require. And you are keeping malice with that person. And you are in, not in talking terms with the person. Please, if you keep malice with the person that has all you need to succeed, who is in disadvantage? Is it the person or you? It is you that is in disadvantage. It's not the person. You need the person more than the person need you. Just like we need God more than God need us. You know many times we believers take this privilege of relationship with God for granted. And we make it look as if it is God that needs us. God cannot survive without us. <laughs> Can I tell you something that take everyone in this world out of the scene. God will still be God. Can I let you know that take all the prayers, let's say the eight point something billion people in the world are born again and they are in fellowship with God, praying to God. Can I tell you that if you take that all of out, all, all, of, the, all of that out of the way, it doesn't reduce God. Somebody shout hallelujah. But do you know that if you take God out of the way, you are nothing? Hello, somebody. If you take God out of the way, He's the only constant factor in the school of success and destiny fulfillment. Every other factor, they are nothing but variables. The only constant permanent factor you can't do without, it's not optional, is God. That's why it says in John chapter 15, for apart from me, he said, abide in me and my word in you. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Minus me, you are nothing. Without me, you are nothing. Exclude me, you are nothing. 
Ignore me, you are nothing. Malice me, you are nothing. Refuse to talk to me, you are nothing. And then you can also put in the positive. With me. Hallelujah. That's why it says, for with God, all things are possible. With me, you can be everything that I created you to be. When you are in fellowship, when you are in talking terms, when you are in communion with me, your impossibilities will be swallowed by my possibilities. Somebody shout hallelujah. So it is not just what we do because it's a, it's a lifetime covenant responsibility. And can I tell you that it does not end here on earth. It continues even in, in heaven. It's a fellowship that starts here and will continue after rapture when we get to heaven. So it's not something we do tem temporarily. It's something that we do permanently. Now, you better learn it now. Otherwise, you'll be stranded in heaven. Amen, somebody. Now, it's just that in heaven, we will not be, we will not be fellowshipping for our needs to be met. Because in heaven, there are no needs. In heaven, we'll be fellowshipping for fellowship's sake. Hallelujah. I hope you know that the needs you have today that very soon you will look for those needs. You don't have them again. Needs are not permanent. Problems are not permanent. That's why you shouldn't allow any need, any problem to, to be a concern. Because there's nothing you see right now that cannot be changed. And whatever your situation is, I prophesy and declare this week, may you find grace and help to meet that need. Find grace and help from God to take care of that situation. Hallelujah. He said that you may obtain mercy. That you may obtain mercy. Now we saw in Acts chapter, Acts chapter 6 when there was problem in the church. The disciples were almost going to be distracted to get into welfare, abandon the ministry of prayer and welfare, uh, ministry of prayer and the word, and get into handling welfare matters. They said, We will not. We will give ourselves to the ministry of prayer and the word. And let us choose people that can handle this other problem. And they chose people that handle it. They, they, they knew the importance of fellowship with God, they knew the importance of prayers. What oxygen is to your life, your natural life, the air you breathe, what it is to your natural life, that is what prayer is to your spiritual and natural existence. Hallelujah. That is what prayer is to your spiritual and natural existence. Now we further say that God to show how important the message of God is for our survival, for our success here on earth, that God establish a medium by which the children of this world can access his mercies. When he asked Moses to build the tabernacle in the wilderness. There was, there were three three sections: the outer court, the inner court, the holy of holies. And in the holy of holies was the ark of the covenant, and the ark of the covenant had the mercy seat on it. And the high priest was able to go into the holy of holies once a year with the blood of the animals that the children of Israel presented. Then he would make sacrifice for the atonement of their sin. He will go in with that blood that they had, you know, uh, sacrificed the animals, and then he will he will plead with God. He will atone for the sins of the children of Israel. He will obtain mercies by the blood of those animals for the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Now, in the Old Testament, you couldn't access that mercy seat. You couldn't access the Holy of Holies 
you couldn't access where the Ark of the Covenant was that represents God without being the high priest. And even the high priest could not go every day. He went in once in a year. And if himself defaulted, no one could go in to bring him out because he would drop dead. They would only pull him out with a long rope. When they don't hear the belt ringing as he's performing his, his assignment, they know that he has dropped dead. And they will pull him out with a long rope. That is how serious it was. But thank God in the New Testament, by the blood of Jesus, that that barrier has been removed. That obstacle has been removed. That wall of partition has crumbled. And now we can access the mercy seat. We can come in boldly. That's why it says come in boldly. Come in boldly that you may do what? You may find grace and obtain mercy. That will minister to your needs. Coming boldly into the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace. Because when you obtain mercy, you will find grace. There's no how you obtain mercy that you will not find grace. It is a, the mercies of God that gives birth to the grace and the favor of God. Hallelujah. Now, we read Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25. I'm just recapping so that those that did not connect on Wednesday, those that have not uh, uh, listened to this message, you can flow with us. You can catch up because what the Lord has to say to us is very crucial. Exodus, Exodus chapter 25, verse 17 to verse 22. Please, can you give it to us? Let's read it quickly. Just to see what I'm explaining to you. And we also saw Exodus 30 verse 6. Leviticus 16 verse 30. He said, Thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof. And a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. Yes. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten wax shalt thou make them. In the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall he, shall he make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings. And their faces shall look one to another towards the mercy seat, and shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. There I will meet with thee and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. Where did God say he will meet with them? He said I will meet with you at the mercy seat. Your advantage is at the mercy seat. So your failure to approach the mercy seat is to put yourself in disadvantage. You can only gain access to my presence and the blessings that come with my presence by the mercy seat. And it is prayer that takes you there. It is prayer that takes you to the mercy seat. Failure to pray is to keep yourself outside of the mercies of God. Is to keep yourself outside of the mercies of God. Failure to pray is to keep yourself outside of divine encounters and divine visitation. He said, I will meet with you at the mercy seat. Somebody that would take this teaching serious and take your prayer to another level. I trust God before this month is over, you will have definite divine encounters. You will have definite divine visitation. God will meet with you. And listen, when God meets with you, he, God cannot meet with you and you remain the same. God cannot meet with you and not meet your needs. That's why it says, come in boldly that you may obtain mercy and find grace. <laughs> find grace to help in the time of need. Hallelujah. I, I think that 
if there's anything every believer every man of god every church should be dedicated and committed to doing more than any other thing it is prayer it is prayer the reason why we joke with prayer is because we see prayer to be only an avenue of receiving something from God. An avenue of our need being met. An avenue to make requests. If you understand that prayer brings you to, to the mercy seat where God meets with you. And then by the mercies of God you are not consumed. <laughs> you will take prayer seriously. Even the person that is prosperous, even the person that is great, that is on top, you would take prayer serious. Because if the mercies of God are pulled out of you, one day you are flat. Look at what happened when God took his mercy away from Job, deliberately. When God took his mercy away from, from Job and, and said to Satan, have you seen my servant Job? There's no one like him. He said, you have, you have, it's because you have blessed him and you have protected him. That's why, you know, he's worshipping you like this. Take the blessings out and you will see what happens. God said, okay, I take, I take my mercy. I withdraw my mercy. You can attack his business and all that he had. And you will see that he will not deny me. God withdrew his mercy. Brothers and sisters, in one day, I hope you know Job was mega massive. Job, Job, Job had businesses. Job was like, you know, some of the multi, multi billionaires of this world today. He had conglomerates, not just one little tiny business somewhere. But have you read that story and discovered that when God pulled out his mercy, in one day, Every business collapsed, including his, his children, they were consumed. When the Bible says it's because of his mercies that we're not consumed, please take it serious. That's why when you see people boast and brag, you just, you cannot but feel sorry for their ignorance. Because this person talking like this, as if it's God, if God just withdrew his message, do you know, if, oh goodness me, do you know even our, our family members are not born again, it is the mercies of God as a result of our intercession that keeps them. Do you know that even our nation, our states, do you know that even this wall, that people talk as if there is God, it is the mercies of God through the intercession of the church, of the saints, of the believers. That things are still going on the way. To, look at look at what one what, look at what one virus did to the whole world, and they have not recovered yet. And they have not recovered yet. Even when the the virus will leave, which we are praying it should leave soon, and people recover health wise, the economic implication is enormous. Germany just got into recession after so many years of not knowing what recession is. The message of God. The message of God. You will experience this mercy in a dimension you have never known. Let your amen be better than that. He said, for in this place of my mercy seat will I meet with you. So every time Aaron, the high priest, went in there with the blood of those animals to make atonement for Israel, God met him. And God released mercy. And that's how Israel was sustained. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can I declare that this season will be over? And your life will get better and better. This season is not going to leave us worse. This season is going to leave us better. This season is not going to put us in disadvantage. But rather in an advantage. If you believe it, shout a better amen. Because of the mercies of God. And so Job lost everything. Lost even his health. The wife said, cause God and die. And then Satan still went back and said, you know, 
is because of his life. Still has his health is still intact. And said God withdrew the, the his message from his health. And so he touched his health. In one day, the man had boiled from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. It was so bad that the wife said, Cause God and die. Do you know what it means to lose all your businesses in one day? Lost everything in one day, lost his children in one day. And the only thing that was left now, the next day, is health. He lost it. He was on the floor. But that's not how the story ends. Now, God was only doing that to prove to Satan that this man genuinely lost me. I want you to come to a place that you can confirm, God can confirm, Satan can confirm that you love God irrespective of your situation. There are people that in this season of COVID-19, in this season of, of, of famine, of uh, scarcity, they have denied God. They have compromised their faith. They have said things they should not have said. If he's God, why, why didn't he show up? Why has he not met my need? Now that just shows your level. That means as far as your relationship with God, his concern is about needs. And any child that relates with the father based on needs only is not, is not a child, is not a bona fide son or daughter of that house. It must be a slave. Somebody shout a little. Because the desire of a genuine son is how to please the father because he understands that everything the father has is his own you know that was why when the, uh, the elder brother of the prodigal son was complaining he said I've been in this house and uh, nothing was done for me no celebration and the father said you, you don't have to grumble and murmur this your brother was lost now he's found and we, we just have to celebrate his, his return You've been in this house. Everything I have is yours. He said, if you had need of any of them, you would have requested. You would have had it. And the, so the father was telling him, as long as you are walking in obedience, and you are a son in this house, you don't need to bother about your needs. Your needs are taken care of. Because all I have is yours. Can I say to a child of God here, please relate with God beyond your needs. Relate with God beyond your situation. Relate with God. See, we are in a time we have to relate with God like the, the three Hebrew boys. Nebuchadnezzar, if you throw us into the fire, our God will deliver us. However, if he refused to deliver us, let us burn in the fire. But to bow, we will not bow. Your relationship need to come to that point. Too many needy Christians. Too many. That's why we're, many are not enjoying this God. Worship is a problem. Praise is a problem. Thanksgiving is a problem. The only time they pray is when they have problems. When they have needs. And when God has met the need, they tell God, I will see you again when another problem comes. Hallelujah. <laughs> may, I, may your own story be different. I say, may your own story be different. Now we went on to look to look at types of prayers, types of prayers that will help you to enjoy the message of God. Number one, we saw the prayers of thanksgiving. You have you have no right to access the mercy seat without gratitude in your heart. You can't approach the mercy seat without gratitude. Psalm 100 verse 4. I will enter into his gate with thanksgiving. And into his court with praise. So the second type of prayer is praise. Now we say thanksgiving is appreciation to God. Praise is the adoration, glorification, exaltation, magnification and celebration of the goodness, the mercifulness, the almightiness of God. So in thanksgiving, you show appreciation. In praise, you are celebrating who God is. You adore him. 
You exalt him. You magnify him. You glorify him. And can I say this? The most effective time to praise is when you are in the midst of problems. You know why? Your attitude in the time of problems will either glorify God, magnify God, or will glorify your problem and magnify Satan. When you go through any situation and then you begin to grumble and murmur and you begin to be in doubt, do you know what you're doing? You are simply discrediting the almightiness of God. You are simply telling people around you and telling Satan, I doubt the possibilities of God and I doubt the capabilities of God. Listen, that is very serious. For you to come to a point where you doubt the cannability of God. You know what cannability is? <laughs> you doubt the cannability. Can God do it? Cannability. You just, you, and you make God look small and then make your situation look big. When you sit down and look sad and look morose. Oh, you have just you have just done a great danger to the almightiness of God. No wonder David said, I will praise the Lord at all times. Child of God, listening to me from wherever you are. I want this season. Let praise not lack from your life. Let praise not, not elude your life. Engage yourself in singing songs to God. Not songs of not songs of, of, of sorrow, but songs of praise. It's not every song that is a song of praise. There are songs you sing and you're insulting God. There are songs you sing and you make Satan big and make God small. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Praise is a powerful weapon in the hands of God to deal with our enemies. We saw that in Psalm 149. Second Chronicles 20, 21 to 25. And then Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 26. Paul and Silas, they were in the prison. Not for what, not for the crime they committed, but for preaching the gospel. They are arrested and thrown into prison. The Bible says they prayed, they sang, they prayed, they sang. Listen, every time you kneel down in prayer and you start thanking God, don't think it's a waste. Don't, don't say... I have waste, I wasted 30 minutes thanking God and singing. Let me go and pray the real prayer. No, you woke up. You prayed in that thanksgiving. You prayed. In that praise, that singing of songs, you prayed. That's what you see in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21 to verse 25. When they, 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 there was a confederacy of enemies against Israel. All they did was to raise instruments. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good and his mercies endure forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good and his mercies endure forever. And the Bible says, God brought confusion against the enemies of Israel that they began to fight themselves and kill themselves. I see the enemies of the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ in this state, in this nation, torn against themselves. Every conspiracy against the church, every lie, every deception, every wickedness against the church, every hypocrisy, I see God expose it. I see God bring it to judgment in the mighty name of Jesus. Every alliance, every formation against the church, I see God turn against them. I see them turn against themselves because Jehovah is against them. And whatever that prison is, 
I see God open your prison doors. I see God open the prison gates. I see the chains broken. And I see somebody come out. I see the chains broken from your business. Broken from your marriage. Broken from your mind. Broken from your intelligence. Broken from your finances. And I see you come out. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number three was the prayer of supplication. The prayer of supplication or request with tears. The prayers of supplic supplication or request with tears. I gave us Ephesians 6, 18 to 19. I gave us Psalm 30 verse 8, Psalm 142 verse 1. And Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. The prayer of supplication is making requests to God. And, 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 and is sometimes mixed up with tears. Brokenness brokenness listen when when your heart is broken in the place of prayer you move God that's why you can't move God until you are moved yourself if your situation does not move you you can't move God if you are not serious and show God desperation that I want to change level. I want to come out of this situation. God will not move. God doesn't do transaction business with nonchalant on serious people. No, he does not. That's why he said, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, and they shall be satisfied. If you are just casual and lackadaisical in prayers, the way you go to God, you go to God and you know, with, with, without seriousness, believe me, you can't see God. You can't see God like that. I want you every time you go to God in prayers, take it serious. I, I saw something the other day. I took it and I recorded it. A young lady, Pastor Favor, I don't know if you saw it. A young lady went to God in prayers. Now, she was the only one in the church hall. It's, it's as if she, she just left house and she said, let me go and cry to God. Because the mockery, the mockery of not having ch children was so much. She got married and for years she had no children. So they showed how she walked into the church and she began to pray and she began to speak to God and she began to talk to God and she began to ask God to intervene, to show mercy. And then while she was in that prayer, her phone rang. And she rushed and grabbed the phone. And she now suspended God and answered the call. Now while she was praying in that prayer, they showed an angel that appeared. And the angel was bringing, traveling in her direction, bringing the child, coming towards the altar where she was. And then she now suspended the prayer. And so when she suspended the prayer, the angel stood. And then she answered the call and told the person, okay, I will soon be with you. As soon as she finished answering the call, she now summarized the prayer with God and then got up. As soon as she got up and left, the angel turned and disappeared with the child. I recorded it and kept it because for me, that meant so much. You mean this is how people miss the message of God, divine intervention, moment of turnaround by one carelessness, one seriousness, one irresponsible attitude, one distraction in the place of prayer, one disrespectful attitude in the place of prayer. Hi! Jesus. And I, I now wonder how many people have missed such moments. How many have missed such moments? Where their answers are right. But one carelessness. One disrespectful thing in the place of prayer. One irresponsible attitude. One phone call just scattered everything. You won't miss your visitation. You will not miss your visitation. I wish your amen can be better than that. From your home. From your home. You will not miss your own visitation. The angel carrying your miracle. You won't miss that angel. You won't miss that miracle. You won't miss that favor. You won't miss that financial transaction. That financial transfer. You won't miss that husband. That wife. No devil from anywhere will show up. No satanic call. No satanic visitor. No satanic 
merchant will come in between you and the moment of your change of story in the name of Jesus. Now let's read Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 about Jesus. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 about Jesus. Show the break us also from the ta 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 ta. Joko te 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 Put that phone on silence. Put it on silence. Now, every you don't have to off it. I think every phone has that. Or you can reduce the volume. Now, whatever call comes in, whatever text after the prayer, you will see. It. After all, this prayer is not eternal. This prayer is 30 minutes. Sometimes it's 10 minutes. Sometimes it's one hour. Even if it's five hours, you can you can get the person back. And can I tell you this? You can't you can honor God in prayer. And what was to be yours because you didn't answer call or text at that time, you miss it. It's not possible. Instead, you will have double. Instead, you will have triple. Instead, God will make the person to even increase it for you. I want us to have the attitude of reverence. Listen to me. We are known to be praying people. But do you know what I realize about us? We pray with irreverence attitude. We pray with carelessness. We pray with irresponsibility. Irresponsible attitude. We pray with casualty. We pray with nonchalantness. You are praying and chewing gum. Come on. Which president will you be talking to? And you are chewing gum. Which president, which governor will you be talking to? You had audience with greatness. I saw something last night as I was studying. That Nebuchadnezzar asked for them to bring royal seat. Prince. Princes from Judah. Men who had understanding of science. Daniel chapter 1. Young men that were looking good. Young men that were intelligent. He said they would be trained for three years. That they might know how to appear before the king. Oh, goodness me. Do you know why many people miss opportunities? They don't know how to relate with the great. They don't know how to appear before the great. They don't know how to manage greatness. don't know how to maximize opportunities with great greatness and great people. I say, eh? So there's how to uh, there's how to look, there's how to appear, there's how to behave, there's how to talk if you are to serve in the way, in the palace. Somebody shout hallelujah. You won't miss your opportunities. I was asking for, okay, Hebrews. Yes, can you give it to us? talking about Jesus. He said, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he did you see that? He was heard in that he did what? He feared. He, now, not only that he offered prayers with strong crying and tears. This is supplication now. But that he did it with what? With fear. With reverence. With reverence. You are in prayer and you are and you are you are on Facebook. What kind of prodigal prodigal attitude is? Okay, why not leave the prayer? Go and live inside Facebook. When Facebook gives you quick notice, you now come back to prayer. May God give us wisdom. And now this is also, please leave that scripture. He offered prayer, he offered what? Supplications with strong crying. Supplication with strong crying. So this scripture defines what the prayer of supplication is. Making requests with strong crying mixed with tears. One thing God can't stand, I said that on Wednesday, is the tears of his children. Don't let the child of God cry for you. 
it's like when you know the parent hear their their child maybe fell down and cried or was in danger and cried you need to see how they rush somebody here you have been crying to god god is about to arise on your behalf god is about to show up for you god is about to manifest for you the message of god is about to be released in your direction in the mighty name of jesus strong cry the next prayer we looked at this prayer of petition of producing your strong reasons prayer of petition of producing your strong reason isaiah chapter 41 verse 21 this is a this is a prayer where you you come and you 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 let god know why you want him to do what you are asking him to do and of course your reason should be based on his promises that's why it says in Isaiah 43 verse 26, it is also the prayer that put God to remembrance concerning his promises. You are petitioning heaven based on the promises of God. And then you put God to remembrance concerning his word. Now, you can petition God, I mean heaven. You can also petition Satan. Based on what God said. Based on what God promised. Satan, it must be so. Satan, I insist. Satan, I enforce it. Satan, it has to be in this order of God's promises. Now, that is the prayer of what? Of petition. The prayer that you pray to, to enforce what God has promised. And I, like I said on Wednesday, sometimes you can strengthen that prayer with a vow. That's what Anna did. You can strengthen that prayer with a vow. It's also prayer that you 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 bring your your services your pet you petition heaven based on the, the faithfulness of your services, based on the faithfulness of your offerings. That is a prayer that Hezekiah prayed in Isaiah chapter thirty-eight. He said, "God, you know how I've served you, wholeheartedly." He said, "God, if I die, can the dead praise you?" And God was moved. Somebody here, God will be moved about you today. God will be moved about you this week. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now the next one we saw was the prayer of warfare. Prayer of warfare. It is your warfare that determines your welfare. Whether you like it or not, there is, there is war to fight. Whether you like it or not, we are in a warfare. Ephesians 6 verse 10 to verse 18. Say for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. So there's a wrestling, there's a contest. There is a, a battle between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Now you can't be a child of God in the kingdom of light and you you claim ignorance of this. You think that everybody you see are your friends. You think that everybody that smiles with you are your friends. You think that everybody that you see looking nice, handsome, beautiful, they are your friends or they wish you well or they are on the side of God. My friend, we just have two classes of people in this world. Those on God's side and those on the, the devil's side. Now, there are people that are on the devil's side, they are obvious. The witches, the wizard, <laughs> the, the, the sorcerers, the diviners, the herbalists, the juju priests, their own is obvious. But can I tell you that there are also people on the devil's side. Disciples and agents of a devil that dress very well. They have straight legs. They have pointed nose. They carry lipstick. They have eyeshadow, eyebrows. And they have, you know, clean dentition. They speak Queen's English. But inside of them is nothing but snake. It could be a young man. It could be a young lady. A young man, very intelligent. When he speaks English, you want to swallow you know about on that but inside is a devil somebody shout at him. so you can't claim ignorance of this you can't claim ignorance of this there are people that arrive school from parents that are agents of darkness and the assignment is to cover the intelligence manipulate the intelligence of other children and make a very sound intelligent child become a dull child that will never prosper against you it will never prosper against your children if they tried on any of our children let it boomerang i say let it boomerang let the god that frustrates the tokens of liars 
frustrate their thinkers. Make diviners mad. Turn wise men backward. Make their knowledge foolish. You shall not be manipulated. You shall not be manipulated. Anything projected from any altar wickedness against you, I send fire to scatter it. This week, as I send fire to scatter it, it shall not, it shall not prosper. It shall not work against us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse from verse 3 it says, Though we live in the flesh, we war not after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of some wood. So there's a warfare. There's a warfare. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24 to verse 26. God said to the children of Israel, He said, The land I have given to you, you have come to the border of it. He said, Now go in and engage, engage the, 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 the king of Heshbon. Engage him in a battle. Engage him in a battle. Engage him in a battle so you can possess the land. Contend with him in battle so you can possess the land. You want to be better than battle. You want to be better than battle. That the Paul says it takes a fight to have a flight. The servant of God said, God have not stopped being faithful. Men have, men have st many have stopped being faithful. Joshua chapter 11 verse 19. The children of Israel said, all the land God gave to them, they took it in battle. They said one that was not very important. Can I tell you that nothing good comes easy? Anything that has value has a price. You didn't hear me. Anything of value has a price. Anything of value has a price. Anything of value has a price. The only thing without price is what it has no value and it will bring you into bondage. But anything of value has a price. May God help you to pay that price. I say may God help us to pay that price. And then the last one is a prayer of intercession. The prayer of intercession. That was where I stopped on Wednesday. The prayer of intercession. What is a prayer of intercession? It's a prayer that you you pray not just for yourself but you pray for others the prayer of intercession is a matter of fact it has to do with praying for others standing in the gap for others standing in for others asking god for his mercy upon another person it can be upon an individual it can be upon a family it can be upon a state upon a nation or the nations of the world and if there is a prayer that is relevant right now two prayers are very relevant right now warfare prayer and the prayer of intercession warfare prayer and the prayer of what of intercession god is looking for intercessors people that will stand in the gap for their family for their brothers for their sister stand in the gap for their man of god for the church stand in the gap for their state their nation their community stand in the gap for the nations of a war listen to me as god has great plans so satan has evil plans if we don't stand in the gap the plan of satan comes to pass over people but when we stand in the gap the plan of god will come to pass many times the plans of god are delayed and suspended because there are no intercessors god would do nothing on earth until he find intercessors god would do nothing on earth until he find men who can stand in the gap to bet his agenda and I pray that God will anoint you and empower you that you will begin to take the prayer of intercession serious. I pray that God will deliver his church from the prayer of selfishness. The Bible says in the book of James, it says, it says you do not have because you do not ask. It says when you ask, you ask selfishly to consume it for your own lust. That's why you don't have it. Can I give you one of the secrets to getting God's attention in prayer? Can I give you one of the secrets to making God meet your needs faster than you could ever thought? Spend your time and pray for God's purpose in the life of others, in the church, in the state, in the nation. If your desire is to see the purpose of God manifest in the life of people, the purpose of salvation, of healing, of deliverance, of prosperity, of righteousness, of holiness, of protection, of peace, of joy, I'm telling you, you can't miss your own. 
You know why? The pit that an intercessor gets in to bring somebody out becomes the grave where he buries his problem. You don't he, you didn't hear me. The pit where you step in to bring somebody out in the place of intercession becomes the grave that God uses to bury your situation. Too many selfish believers with selfish prayers. When last did you pray for your church? When last did you pray for your state? Pray for your governor? When last did you pray for your country? When last did you pray for other nations in this kind of pandemic that we have found ourselves? When last did you pray for your neighbors that they will be safe? When last did you pray for members of your family? But I see a new day. I say, I see a new day that the spirit of intercession is going to take a hold of the church like never before. I say, like never before. I love what Pastor Chris Yakilume has been doing since this pandemic started. Global days of prayer and fasting. Leading the world to pray for the purpose of God. He's been very insistent. He's been very, very, very insistent and very aggressive about God's purpose coming to pass. Making sure that the Antichrist is not released upon the earth before time while the church is here. And when he started the prayer leading people all over the world to pray, that is when people's eyes started opening about what was on your cover, on that ground that was going on. There's power in the prayer of intercession. Nothing begs God's purpose and agenda like the prayer of intercession and warfare. Warfare means stopping the devil so God can do what he said. He intercession is standing in to enforce the will of God. Bringing the message of God for others. Becoming a conduit pipe through which the message of God can flow. And can I tell you, there's no pipe that carries water that is dry. <laughs> you, want, you want to be wet? You want to have abundance of water? Then allow the water to flow. You know why the Dead Sea has no living thing there? Because it's dead and nothing flows out. It only receives. There's no living thing inside the Dead Sea. If you don't want to die while you are alive, become a conduit pipe that God can flow through his blessings and his messages. Ezekiel 22 verse 30 to verse 31, God said, I sought for the man to stand in the gap and I found none. I sought for a man to stand in the gap, I found none. He said, because I found none, my my anger was was unleashed, released against the people because there was no one to stand in the gap. Because there was no one to stand in the gap. I, the, the woman I have today as my wife will not be alive if not for the prayer of intercession. 19, 9, 2007, I went for a meeting in Switzerland. I finished the meeting on Sunday. I, I was and then I slept that Sunday night. I was so tired and then. Around 3 a.m., God woke me up and said, Prayer. I said, God, this meeting has been very heavy. And normally, when I travel for meetings like that, I don't eat, I fast throughout. And this meeting was Thursday, I think Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I was fasting throughout, fasting throughout. And then I'm done with the meeting now. I, I want to, you know, sleep, find food, and eat. So I ate, I slept, and God said, wake up and pray. I said, God, please let me rest a little. I will pray later. He said, wake up and pray now. I said, God, please, can I just sleep a little? I will pray later. He said, whatever news you hear, you don't like when you wake up. You are responsible for it. And then he, it, I heard a voice clear. He said, pray for your wife now. Hey! When I heard pray for your wife now, they, they sleep from my village, return back to my village. They want her village sent, return back there. Wife, hey, 
Is it a small thing to go through the headache of traditional marriage again? No, the insult and all the harassment. Look, it's small thing. Satan, you are a liar. And where will you find this kind of wife? Satan, you are a liar. Ziga, da, 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 da. I prayed till I think it was Nigerian time, nine o'clock, uh, uh, Swiss time, eight o'clock. And then as soon as I finished the prayer, my phone rang, and guess who called my phone? She. She said, I, I just had an accident. I said, What happened? She said, We're going from AK to you to buy fuel. The, the rain fell, it wasn't so serious, and the, the car skidded off the road, and then some assaulted and was running into the palm tree that was in the bush. And then he got stuck. Just before he ran into the palm tree, the car just, you know, fell like this and stopped there. And so she came out with the sister in the choir that was in front. And I, I said to her, any injury, any damage? She said, no, I said, okay, go to the hospital, let them check, confirm. Now people that passed by and saw it, they already condemned that whoever was there was there. Now there's a young man that knew us, he used to carry me sometimes, he's a transporter. He drove and went straight to our church in Naked and told them that I know Papa travel. If his mama that was in that car, sorry, because that car is such that nobody can come out. It was a Mercedes Benz. Mercedes is one of the strongest cars. Can you imagine a Mercedes Benz that was so crushed that we couldn't, we couldn't fix it. We couldn't fix it. I sold it 100 and, 100 and something thousand as, as, a, as crap. She went to the hospital and checked x-ray everything no internal bleeding no bone was broken and then the child in the womb which is our glorious victoria today of course that she's around here today tells you that nothing happened that's why i believe she's a prophetic girl that will punish the satan very well you know under that kind of impact it's very easy three months pregnancy <laughs> If I was snoring, if I didn't wake up to stand in the car, God, why? God, why? I traveled to do your work. See what you have done to me, God, why? And then as you're asking God, God, why? He's asking you, Emmanuel, why? You will never have a situation that you have to ask God, God, why? You only say, God, thank you. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 16, 44 to 50. Can you give it to us quick? Quickly, please. The plague broke out against Israel. God was angry with the rebellion of Korah and his friends against, against Moses and Aaron. And thousands died. Thousands died. Even Moses, I was angry with Korah and his Abiram and, and all those rebels. When he saw the number of them, he said to Aaron, get a censer, put some incense and let's stand in the gap between the dead and the living. Please, can you give me that scripture? Please? That is intercession. It is standing in the gap between the dead and the living to prevent death, to prevent accident, to prevent calamity, to prevent destruction. Can I say this? Every time you see any anything happen in the family or happen in the church or happen in the state, in the nation, it's because intercessors fail to pray. Intercessors fail to pray. This pandemic that manifested, the intercessors in the body of Christ, believers fail. Do you know if we had picked this thing and we stood against it, it would not have manifested. Listen. This thing came to us as a surprise in 2020. But can I tell you that this thing has been worked on. This thing has been worked on, prepared, planned and programmed, projected years ago. If we were able to decode it, if we were able to pick it, and if we were able to pray in that direction, this thing would not have manifested. It would not have. Whether from a lab or from an animal or from bat or cat or dog or goat, wherever, we would have decapitated it. It would not have happened. That is how powerful intercession is. 
Jesus said, I shall give to you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind here shall be bound. Whatever you lose shall be loosed. Now, another transition, whatever you allow. Now, that is very relevant in the place of intercession and warfare. That when you step into warfare and intercession, what you allow happens. If you allow sickness, it happens. If you disallow it, it won't happen. If you allow poverty, it happens. If you disallow it, it won't happen. If you allow destruction, it happens. If you disallow it, it won't happen. But many times we are too, too concerned about our needs being met. That we don't deal with the real matters we should deal with in the place of prayer. Can I tell you that the prayer you need to meet your needs doesn't need to take more than 10 minutes. Out of one hour of your prayer, if you pray 15 minutes for others and you pray 10 minutes for yourself, 10 minutes is too much. I want you to dare what I'm saying. Pray so much for God's purpose to manifest in the church in the life of members of a church in, our, in your state, in your nation then you always realize that you, you don't spend much time to pray for yourself in fact many times what I do I just thank God for my needs that they are met can I tell you something the Bible says <laughs> David was talking he said my prayers return to my bosom can I let you know that the prayers you pray for others God uses it to meet your needs first he said, my prayers return to my bosom. He that watereth must be watered. You don't lose praying for others. Prayer is an investment with eternal reward. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? So you can say, I have not even finished praying for my own needs. Why should I spend time praying for others? Why should I spend time praying for my pastor? I, I'm not feeling praying for myself. Why should I spend time praying for members of a church? Or pray, what's my business with praying for my governor and my state? I don't even like the governor. What's my business praying for our president? I don't even like him. What's my business praying for America? I do, my friend, the coronavirus has taught us that we are, we are connected. You might not like the president, but do you know that in the next five years you might have an assignment in America? That part of your the journey of your destiny, God has ordained that one day you arrive in America. <laughs> and can I tell you that the prayer you are praying now for America, that the will of God be done. You are praying for the president. You'll be shocked one day. You 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 are going for admission, masters or whatever, or going for just holiday and you arrive embassy and the person you meet at the counter starts smiling with you as if you have known for years and visa is given to you what are you reaping you are reaping the fruit of years of praying for america remember when we were in Eket? i used to lock myself with one of my pastor friends every friday praying for europe because we heard that europe was a dark continent of the world we will enter there and pray. Lord, save Europe. Lord, raise missionaries. Send them to Europe. And suddenly, God sent me helper from Europe. Suddenly, God took me to Europe. Suddenly, God opened doors in Europe. Can I tell you, till tomorrow, Europe is still blessing me. Till tomorrow, Europe is still blessing me. Once in a while, somebody will send me blessing from Europe. Once in a while, somebody will remember me from Europe. It didn't start by my just getting invitation and arriving there. I started standing in the gap to pray for God to visit Europe. Because, listen, when you pray for God to solve a problem, He will empower you to solve that problem. Are we getting what I'm saying here? I want to encourage you to enroll in the in the ministry of, of prayers, particularly intercession and warfare. I want you to reduce the time you spend in saying, Oh God, oh God, husband, oh God, wife, oh God, I'm not married, oh God, I'm not sure, oh God. I want you to reduce the time you use in praying for yourself and increase the time you are praying for others. Watch what will happen. Aaron ran in and stood in the gap between the living and the dead. Hallelujah. I 
said to them on Friday, you have no right criticizing. Can you give me First Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1? You have no right criticizing any governor, any leader, any president, any, any husband, any wife, any church leader you have not prayed for. Listen, it is, it is lack of intercession, insufficient intercession that is the reason why our nation, our states, our families is the way it is. It is lack of intercession uh, or insufficient intercession is the reason why our brothers and sisters are the way they are. When God saved you, can I tell you one of the assignment God has for every child of God in every family, in every church, in every state, in every nation is intercession. But it's amazing to see instead of our standing in the gap to cry for God's mercy, you are condemning, you are being judgmental, you are insulting, you are crossing, you are abusing, speaking against the governor, abusing the governor, insulting the governor, abusing your a wife that should stand in the gap and pray for the husband, is insulting the husband, comparing him with other men. Madam, you don't know your assignment in that man's life, in that man's house, that you are made to assignment is to stand in the gap is to pray for him it is only when he has a wife who is an intercessor that stands in the gap that is when two two are better than one but as long as it is a sleeping snoring woman who cannot worship God for the family who cannot praise God for the family who cannot thank God for the family who cannot say Satan not so think about the mother of, of John the Baptist if she was not a warfare woman that child should have been called Zacharias and his destiny would have been delayed like the destiny of his father Zacharias but the praying mother said not so Comparing your husband with others when you should have been praying for him, and there's nothing as powerful as the prayer of a mother for the children, the prayer of a wife for the father. There's nothing as powerful as the prayer of a husband for the wife and a father for the children. I recruit everyone hearing me watching this online service uh, into the ministry of intercession. We have cursed enough, we have insulted enough, we have complained enough, we have condemned enough. It is time to stand in the gap between the living and the dead and say, so, Oh God, will God not have mercy? If you are to judge according to iniquity, who can stand? For you are God and we are men. And we are weak. It's only in you that we are strong. Can I tell you that the situation of our country, we, are, we believers are responsible. The situation of the state where you are, it is the body of Christ that is responsible. The situation of this state is the body of Christ. Look at the election of Aquabo State. 2019 because the church spoke in one voice because the church said no more occultic person in the government house and the church lined up behind a child of God despite the federal might despite everything that was done we won that election that's to tell you what happens when the church rise up when the church speak that's to tell you what happens when the church take his place satan understands this that's why satan would do everything to make sure the church does not gather the church does not gather the church if they gather let them play let them not do the real assignment let the men of god motivate the people let the men of god just encourage the people preach prosperity let them not preach righteousness let them teach them how to pray and have all the things they need let them not pray for others satan is very comfortable with that kind of church but when we engage in warfare and we teach people warfare we engage in intercession and we teach people how to stand in the gap satan has problem with that kind of church because he knows that his activities will be put in check am i talking to somebody here olden days there was no city without walls there was no city without a strong gate there was no city without a tower and then the the, the watchmen stood on that 
tower and they stood on the walls to watch out for enemies that are coming and to watch out for anything that wants to enter the city that is the work of intercessors to watch over the city to watch over the family to watch over the nation to watch over the church the way people are insulting and, and speaking and talking against men of God see the way they are ask them when last did you pray for any man of God in this country when last when last when last did you pray for any man of God the truth is listen you cannot condemn judge and criticize anyone you pray for when you start praying for somebody your heart or compassion when you start praying for somebody your heart opens for the person compassion well in you for the person now when you start praying for somebody and you keep praying now you don't only sympathize with what is going through you identify with what is going through are you hearing what i'm saying now now you begin to feel what he feels you are taking on yourself the ministry of the high priest of our confession that is not strange to the feeling of our infirmities oh my goodness am i talking to somebody here you can't gossip somebody you pray for except you were playing except you didn't pray you cannot gossip somebody you sincerely prayed for and cried before god for the person's salvation for her to be conceived for her to marry for him to excel in school you cannot be the one going to condemn that person the church has left a major ministry that's why we are going to social media that's why we are going to newspaper that's why we are having all kinds of ministry satan gave to us running down men of god running down churches running down the things that are, are in the bible trying to look for cheap popularity you have no right to criticize me if you have not prayed for me even apostle paul said pray for me if you shall he said pray for me that god would deliver me from evil men for not all men have faith when you read the book of vision read colossians read the book of the he said pray for us pray that god would give us all trance to speak the word and that we will speak it with bonus he said pray that a door be open for us to declare the mysteries of heaven the great apostle Paul who wrote more than half of the New Testament he asked for prayer let me ask you child of God watching me wherever you are when last did you pray for your pastor when last did you pray for your church when last did you pray for your family when last did you pray in this pandemic in all of your prayers have you prayed for your state have you prayed for your country you see Nigerians we need to wake up I like this pandemic I prayed a prayer yesterday I said God so we don't become stumbling blocks to your purpose whatever you intended to do with COVID-19 Lord do it and don't don't stop until you finish it because I think that COVID-19 is not from God but there is an assignment that God wants to use this COVID-19 to do in the church first in the nations of the world to let the nations of the world to let scientists both medical and psychological sociological economical political scientists know that the arm of flesh fails that man is limited in knowledge it's only God that is limitless so that men can turn and look for God and seek God and so they can find God and so the church can wake up so the church can be revived so we can shake ourselves from the dust like it says in the book of Isaiah chapter 2 he said awake awake O virgin daughter of Zion shake yourself off from the dust put on your garments we need to wake up from the dust the church need to wake up from the dust. Our message need to change. Our attitude need to change. So the rapture will not take us unawares. Listen, if the church continued the way the church was going before pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic, honestly, and rapture took place, it would have been a disaster. 
Our methods need to change. Our character, our attitude need to change. Our priorities need to change. Our preferences need to change. Our focus. Hallelujah. I was asking for that scripture. Please give it to me. Give it to me. I'm coming for a landing now. Share the word. He said, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplication, prayers, and intercessions, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Can you give me verse 2 quickly? Media, give me verse 2 now. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may live a quiet and what and peaceable life. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. Can you give me that verse two, verse two and three in the message Bible? A quiet and peaceable life. What is he talking about? A life of peace, a life of security. There was a time. There was a time in this state you couldn't go out at certain hours of the night. But look at the peace we're enjoying. Look at the peace we're enjoying. You can drive into this city. You can drive into this state anytime. I have gone for meetings and have returned late in the night. It's the place is quiet. There's no harassment on the road. It's a prayer especially for the rulers and their governor, government. To rule well so we can be quietly about our business of living. Of living simply in humble contemplation. Can you give me another? This is it. Has never talks about so we can live secure and in prosperity. He said, "This is good and, and pleases our God and Savior." So when you pray for the governor, the president, the ministers, the commissioner, when you pray for the chairman, the counselor, when you pray for your pastors, you are not doing them a favor. You are doing yourself a favor. You can't rise above your leader. It is your head that determines your height. If you walk into into <laughs> international passport office or driver's license, they would they would ask you to stand by somewhere, and there are different measurements there of height, and they want to get your height. It is your head that determines your height. So who your leader is matters. As a husband, as a teacher, as a principal, as a headmistress, proprietor, proprietor, as a pastor, as a governor, as a president. That's why we need to pray for them. So the wisdom of God, the counsel, the purpose of God, the fear of God can guide them. Because a leader can do what is not of his making. First Chronicles chapter 21 verse 25 says, Satan incited David to count Israel. So Satan can incite. Satan can move people to do what they shouldn't do. But when we pray, the spirit of God comes upon them. So they are also moved. They are guided by the spirit of God. So you see them. Have you seen somebody who did something for you before and he's like, I don't understand. He, he doesn't understand how and why he did it. Have you been in that situation before? Because of prayer. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. Go and resign from that means, social media ministry. Of condemning pastors. Condemning churches. Condemning believers. Condemning the things of God. Condemning governors, presidents, leaders. Attack anyone on top. Listen, what you attack, you can't attract. What you despise and disrespect, you can't command. You need to understand that. You might have qualification for it, but because you lack the attitude for it, you can't ascend that altitude. So you need to repent and start praying for greatness so you can attract greatness. Start respecting greatness, honoring greatness, honoring offices and positions so that you can rise there. Am I talking to somebody here? You can't keep befriending people's husband. Breaking somebody's wife's heart. Causing the man to leave his family and spend money on you. And you think you will marry. If you marry, you will be misery. That's the truth. 
you can't you can corrupt one and enjoy the other one. What you sow is what you reap. So if you're a young girl that your own ministry is people's husband, resign, retire. Write the application and send it now. Let me collect it. If you want God to have mercy on you, if you want remedial, if you want remedial, from remedial you can read in you can read something in university that is good. <laughs> Are you aware of that? If you want to be remedied, they are intelligent students. Jam was wasting their time anyhow. They went and remedied, remedied with their school set. They read something. One year after that, they are reading something very powerful. What Jam refused to give them, they end up reading. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is hope for somebody. I said, There is hope for somebody. Listening to this message now. You just need to apply the first secret. Acknowledge your fault. Acknowledge that you are wrong. Please quit joining people on social media to run down pastors and churches. Run down leaders. Stop cursing your pastors. Stop cursing your churches. The, the church of Jesus Christ. Stop cursing your country. The best place to be a citizen is in your country. All these second class citizens. Very soon the world is coming to a place. I'm telling you, mark what I'm saying. Very soon the world is coming to a place where second class citizens will not enjoy certain benefits. Mark what I'm saying. Write it down. It will be that the first class citizens. Now the, what that means is that you are you are, you are, you were born there. You didn't come to, to inherit citizenship. You were born there. The way it's going. Those might be the ones that will get certain privileges, opportunities, like employment, like housing and some money. Because the government will try to see how to manage what is available. So all the people that, that cross and abuse our leaders and government from other nations, you are joking. You are a joker. You are speaking, you are speaking in video from America. And you, and you are cursing Nigeria. You are a joker. You are speaking a kid from America. And you are insulting our governor. You are a joker. You are speaking Yoruba from, from London. And you are cursing Nigeria and insulting our, our leaders. You are joking. You better pray for this country. Because one day you will be brought back here. And those that were brought back. <laughs> some people were. How many have they brought back from Dubai? From London, America? You better pack your bags. Because it might be the next. All of us will now see our irresponsible attitude and lifestyle towards this country. Including those of you that ran and went outside. You will not invest anything in Nigeria. Everything is outside. I feel sorry for those who, who, who have properties outside this country. Because very soon it's going to be forfeited. So if, if you are wise, you better sell it now and bring the money and invest in Nigeria. And develop Nigeria. Oh! Coronavirus has advantages. For once! It has taught us that there's nothing like home. Build home. Build home. Build home. Don't be like the sons of... Uh, the, uh, this... Uh, scripture in the songs of Solomon. He said, my mother's children have made me to take care of their vineyard. My own are forsaken. Nigerians have forsaken Nigeria. Blowing grammar from different nations of the world that already developed. Those who develop them, if they didn't develop them, will you have it? It's like somebody running away from a church that is growing. Going to a cathedral class church with air condition. My friend, before you have pneumonia, you better leave that place. Is it not people who let down their money, let down their services, let down their life for the church to reach that level? If you stay in your own that is growing and contribute to buying land, won't you build? Won't you one day have AC? Redeemate does not make anybody. God does not give people redeemate. He after Adam, the first Adam, God resigned from giving people redeemate. He gives you raw material. 
That's why many are not married because they are looking for ready made. It is the sister you are ready to make that you will marry and enjoy. It's the brother you are ready to contribute to make that you will marry and enjoy. Anything outside of that, you are only you are only wishing. And if wishes were horses, beggars will be on top of it. Somebody shout at It's time to pray. Too much condemnation going on. Nigerians are brought condemning Nigeria, criticizing, <laughs> crossing everything in Nigeria. This one that you're going to come home to come and meet what you have been crossing, what will you do? So you better start praying for this country if you're a child of God. You better start thinking of the investment you can bring back to Nigeria. You better start thinking because very soon everybody will be asked to go back home. Everybody will be asked to go back home. Already America has suspended the, the processing of green card. Very soon everybody will be asked to go back home. There will be no more hiding place for those that want to be responsible. I speak the, I speak the truth to us of what is going to happen. And this will be to the fulfillment of God's purpose. Some of the best, best governors and presidents we would have had. They are in America, in London, in Europe, blowing grammar, in China. They won't come home to be part of what is going on. So they can bring what they have learned to put here. Some of the best doctors in America are Nigerians. Some of the best doctors. Some of the best doctors. What is wrong with going to America to study and come back home? The best, one of the best presidents we had in, in Ghana was Terry Rawlings. Because he is he's a Ghanaian that is one parent Ghana, one uh, from uh, abroad, who refused to stay abroad but came home to stay in Ghana. That man, that man cleaned up Ghana. He's the man that uprooted corruption. If you refuse to leave corruption alone, you were killed. He laid foundation for what seems to be a, a better Ghana today. You remember? You, how many of you know Ghana must go? There was a time Ghana was worse than anything you can think of. All Ghanas, I mean Ghanaians, all road led to Nigeria. Today it is not Ghana must go. Today it is Nigeria must go. Ghana is pursuing Nigerians now. They are careful of Nigerians. Because they decided to put their house in order. Think about that. He wants meals. Mother is, is, mother is Swiss and father is Ghana. If with the advantage of being a Swiss, he ran to Europe. Will we, will we have this kind of man of God that is a Ghanaian affecting the whole world? So some of the best leaders we have are outside insulting us, abusing us, crossing us. Instead of coming home to be a blessing. Why did you think God prophesied that Israel will return to their land? I hope you know till tomorrow Israel is still returning. One of the major assignments of, of the government of Israel is the return of every Jew. Chinese Jew African Jews, uh, American Jews, wherever they are, they keep returning. They call it Aliyah. They will not rest until the last of them return. Hallelujah. Prayer of intercession. Can I conclude by saying this to you? That that is the current ministry of Jesus. The current ministry of Jesus. That's what Jesus is doing right now. That's what Jesus is doing right now. The Bible says, He always, He lived to make intercession for us. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. First John chapter 2, verse 1. That is the current ministry of Jesus. So when you get involved in intercession, you're getting involved in the ministry of Jesus. In heaven, over the nations of the world. 
You know, sometimes people say, why is God not judging people the way he used to do in the Old Testament? It's because of the blood of Jesus and the mercy seat. And then Jesus at the right hand side of the Father, making intercession, making intercession. He lived to make intercession for them. He lived to make intercession. That is the current ministry of Jesus. So every intercessor is involved in the current ministry of Jesus. Are you aware that the major assignment of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer is intercession? Romans chapter 8 verse 26 and then the verse 27 and then verse 34 it says for the spirit of our infirmities for we know not how to pray as we ought to but the spirit maketh intercessions for us with groanings that we know not according to the will of the Father and because the spirit makes intercession for us verse 28 then everything worketh together for you to them that love God because the Holy Spirit rearranges the things to line up with the will of God since we are limited in our mind we don't know everything so he takes over that's why when you pray in tongues my friend you are not doing mouth exercise it's the holy spirit that is is in engaging you in his major assignment in your life that can end affliction of 20 years that can stop accident that can abort and terminate a death sentence the one you are praying in tongues and you are chewing gum you are praying in tongues and you are browsing the seriousness of the highest order that even Satan is amazed hallelujah I say hallelujah finally did you give us verse 34 give us verse 34 of that of that Romans chapter 8 Romans 8 34 Show the He said, Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yeah, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also make it intercession for us? Make it intercession for us. Make it intercession for us. So his major ministry in heaven to the to the world, to the believers, to the saints is what? Is intercession. The major ministry of Holy Spirit on earth here. In the church in our life is what is intercession and then finally the growth development welfare security of a nation state family organization etc is determined by the intercession of the saints is determined by the intercession of the saints is determined by the intercession of the saints you want to see madam you want to see your husband enter dimensions of favor dimensions of blessings he has not known you want him to go out one day and return with testimonies that will cause your enemies to congratulate you madam know the ministry of intercession you you have complained about everything that is he has not done that is not working in the house the only thing you have not done you have not stood in the car you have not interceded you have not pleaded for God's mercy. You have not pleaded for, for, for God to veto what is not working. You have not pleaded for God to veto the disadvantage and turn it into an advantage. You have not pleaded for God to veto the limitation, the poverty, and turn it into prosperity. That's why nothing has changed. Members of churches, citizens of states and nations, this is what God is saying to the church right now. This is what God is saying to the church. This is what God is saying. God is looking for you to stand in heaven. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. God is looking for people that will stand in their car. And this does not take, it, it, it must not be five hours. It must not be three hours, two hours. Five minutes can make a difference. Ten minutes, thirty minutes, one hour. As God give you grace. Oh, just lift up your voice. Just lift up your voice. And thank God for his word. Shall I break a dose? Can I break a dose? Shall I break a dose? Can I break a dose? Shall I break a dose? Can I break a dose? Shall I break a dose? Can I break a dose? Shall I break a dose? Can I break a dose? Shall I break a dose? Shall I break a
In Jesus' name we pray. I said on Wednesday that the world will never forget the ministry of John Wesley and Charles Wesley. Because of a praying mother. Because of an intercession mother. Who will conceive them in intercession. Carry the pregnancy in intercession. Give birth to them in intercession. Raise them in intercession. They became arrows of people. We really need to ask God to forgive us. We really need to ask God. I hope you know that one of the major assignments of the devil is to condemn. Is to is that he's called the accuser of the brethren. And he accuses us to discredit us. He accuses us to condemn us. How many men and women have joined the devil in that ministry? And we're flexing our muscle and we're thinking we are right. My friend, two wrongs can't make a right. I listened to uh, God's servant apostle, uh, Suleiman, the other day. He said there was a time Pastor Chris was going through so much media attack. And he just sat down and said, God, this wonderful man of God that is moving with so much signs and wonders, crusade everywhere in this country. You turn on the television, you could not but feel the presence of God oozing out of the program of Pastor Chris. We were like, wow! And the media took on him to tear him apart and to destroy him. He said he was to go for a meeting. As he turned on the news and heard what was going, he just stretched in and said, Oh God, we, we can't join the world to bring down our generals. Lord, help this man. Let this be for his honor and elevation and promotion. Strengthen him and keep him. He said as, as he, he was praying for him, suddenly it was done on him that what you honor and respect, you will attract he said a force entered him before that time. He used to see little headache and migraine here and there while Pastor Chris is seeing the lame walk, blind eyes open. He said he went for meeting that day. As he walked into the hall, people were falling under the anointing without touching anybody including the, 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 co uh, the coordinator of the service. He just, he just aligned himself by intercession with what God was doing. He just aligned himself by intercession with God's counsel. And then God moved his healing and deliverance ministry to another level. And he said, I make bold to say it with all humility. And that there are people who, who will not refer to others for what is happening in their life. He said, no, I cannot. I acknowledge that I enter the dimension of healing and deliverance by praying for this man of God and identifying him. They never met before. I don't think till tomorrow they have met It's amazing that people that go to radio and television and run down the church, run down the, the pastors and members of churches. No wonder we are not seeing the blessings the way we should see. It's amazing that the people who are saying church should not open. I heard somebody today on radio say a church should not open. And he says it's a worker in the church. What's the problem with you? Do you know the significance of the opening of church and the closing of church? Why can't you do your media work and stop where they taught you? And leave the spiritual matters. Everybody now knows everything in the Bible. As if everybody knows physics and chemistry. As if everybody knows how to fly a jet. That you are inside an aircraft. Does that make you a, a pilot? Because we are in church. We are born again. Everybody now knows the Bible. It, 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 is, it is making my heart bleed. This COVID-19 pandemic has really exposed believers and i'm wondering what have we been raising we've been raising enemies of the kingdom i've not heard in any of the radio and television people who really came out and spoke for church and spoke for god everybody is just saying eh, market can open let church close even if it close they don't care they don't care even if you don't know what to answer keep quiet So people are more organized in the market. People don't greet in the market. When God, some states have started opening. And I know that very soon our state will open. Because our governor cannot love God like this and not, be, and not open the state. Just cut it. 
the church met in the temple and they met in the house you can't change the order it is temple and house not house and house and people who read journalism who have entered radio looking for food to eat they won't keep quiet why did we have tabernacle in the wilderness who went is it in the wilderness you will build a church? The most glorious church was built in the wilderness. If God did not want place, people can gather. Ethiopian you know, left Ethiopia to Jerusalem to attend the feast in the synagogue. What are we talking about? It's like it's like a, 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 a history student, history student trying to do operation in the theater. Uh, trying to fly a jet even if you are my daughter I can't enter that aircraft for my soul will you enter the aircraft and fly now and say I'm your pastor just enter by faith so why is everybody why is everybody trying to do the work of a pastor making the mistake of Uzziah wonderful man who ended in calamity and tragedy because he left being a king and to do in the work of a priest this, these are the messages that people should hear now these are the messages people should hear now stay in your field and in your area when a question is asked keep quiet on what you don't know I preach too much wherever you are from your house and ask God for mercy let's cry for mercy let's say Lord forgive us forgive us our our uncovenant attitude our irresponsible lifestyle forgive us for forgiving ourselves to, 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 to the things that does not please you becoming accusers of the men of God accusers of brethren becoming judgmental forgive us for joining the war to condemn to judge to accuse your servant and your church forgive us for speaking against our state our nation our governors our president our leaders forgive us lord for not praying for them for not praying for, forgive me for not praying for my husband enough my wife enough my parent enough my children enough lord forgive me lord mercy lord have mercy lord have mercy forgive us our irresponsible lifestyle forgive us our selfishness in our prayers forgive us our unseriousness in the place of prayer our nonchalant attitude our lackadaisical attitude forgive us oh god our lord pride and arrogance because of the little material things we have forgive us for for sleeping when we ought to be awake standing in the gap for your kingdom to come for your will to be done forgive us lord for lacking understanding when we ought to have understanding like the sons of Issachar. lord forgive us 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 we need your help we need your help forgive us for neglecting our major primary assignment the ministry of intercession the ministry of standing in the gap there are some of you listening watching this is a major ministry God called you into this is what God started you with and opened you to bless it you have left it now you are blowing grammar now you are judging condemning men of God and churches now you have become a politician you know talking about every politics condemning president governors leaders you reading every newspaper you won't read the bible you won't pray for any president any governor any leader and they, listen your blessings would have been more than what you've experienced if if you will repent today and get back to that primary assignment minister of intercession where you used to lock yourself in and pray and cry and fast to god it will amaze you the kind of blessing prosperity god will bring upon your life even generational blessing let's ask god for mercy 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 lord forgive us lord forgive us lord forgive us in jesus name we pray wherever you are lift up your hand lord make me a practical instrument for you use me oh lord lord make me a practical 
instrument for you. Use me, oh Lord. Lord, make me, Lord, make me a practical instrument for you. Oh, use me, oh Lord. Lord, make me a practical instrument for you. Use me, oh Lord. Listen, what I speak to you today, I, I speak to you not just a teaching, a, a preaching is a prophetic word. Watch out for those who think they have run and left Nigeria. They are comfortable where they are. Watch out. Watch out. Laws of nations and policies about visas are going to so change. Mini business things are so going to change. We are going to have more people come home. So you better repent from cursing, insulting, abusing your leaders and, and think of what you can come back home to do. Those of, those of us who ran from the south, south, southeast, and you think you have arrived here, Lagos and arrived, they save heaven. You better begin to think twice. Better begin to think twice and wake up from slumber. Because I tell you, after this pandemic, things are not going to be the same. I want to pray for you. You have been on part of this service and you're not born again. You want to give your life to Christ so that we can bring the service to a close. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive me my sins. I've lived my own life. I turned against you and your purpose. I'm sorry. I repent. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Died for my sins, rose from the dead. I receive him now into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Save my soul. Make me born again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, have mercy on that, that young man, that young woman, that family, that person that prayed that prayer of salvation. Is it they that call upon the name of the Lord? They shall be saved. Save him. Save her. Write his name in the book of life. Remove his name in the book of death. Give him eternal life. Give him eternal life. In Jesus' name. Now everybody watching, every child of God everywhere, because we are guilty in this matter. Lift up your hand and pray this prayer after me. We are guilty in this matter. We are. America is what America is today. Although this generation have tried to, uh, to, 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 to bring America down by departing from God. But America was laid on the foundation of, the, of, of Christ, of God, the fear of God. Men like Abraham Lincoln and the rest of them. Even Great Britain, a small tiny island that colonized the whole world. Because of their godly heritage. Although this generation has, has left God. That's why things are happening in nations. In a way that science can't explain. People can't understand. It is, a, it is a call for us to return to God. And for every child of God. Listen to me every man of God. Wherever you are. We have criticized. We have condemned. We have judged. We have accused enough. We are crossed. By and insulted enough. Let us ask God to forgive lift up your voice say father in the name of jesus i ask for your mercy forgive me for joining the people of the world to cross my nation judge and condemn and cross the leaders of my nation insult them even in my state in the family in the community in the church particularly your servants in our nation in the states father I stand in the gap for myself, for my family, for my state, for our nation, for the nations of the world. We ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. Let mercy prevail over judgment. If you are to judge according to iniquity, who can stand? Let our attitude of judgment, our attitude of condemnation, of insult, of criticizing, abusing leaders states and nations father forgive us in the name of jesus i understand today that whatever i hate and attack i can attract whatever i hate i attack i insult i can attract lord there are things i have hated attacked insulted and yet is my prayer point i ask for mercy forgive me lord forgive me for not engaging in the ministry of intercession 
forgive my selfishness in prayers. Lord, forgive me. I ask that your, the Holy Spirit will enroll me, will initiate me into the ministry of Christ currently in heaven, the ministry of intercession. Lord, make me an intercessor for my family, for my state, for the church of Jesus Christ. Lord, for my community, make me an intercessor. Let the spirit of intercession come upon me. Grace to intercede. Grace to pray for others. Grace to pray for your kingdom. Your will and purpose to be done. Let it come upon me. Deliver me from selfishness in the place of prayers. As I stand in the gap and pray, I ask for your mercy upon my life, my family, my community, my state, nation, and the nations of the world. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, right now, I ask for your mercy upon my family, upon my state, upon my nation, upon the nations of the world. Lord, let the evil assignment of this COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, let it be arrested by fire. Let only what you intend that this COVID-19 will accomplish, let that be accomplished. The judgment of the wicked, the judgment of their wickedness, Lord, the, the destruction of the wicked and their wickedness against our state, our nation, against your church, against my life, against my family. Father, let your intent and purpose for this COVID-19, this season be fulfilled. Revival of your church, awakening in the church and in the states and the nations. Father, the repentance of nations in the name of Jesus. Father, harvest of souls like we have never seen before the return of Christ. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for a great week. A week that we shall experience your mercy and your favor like never before. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just lift up your hand. Wave to the Lord. Wave to the Lord. Wave to the Lord. Glorify him. Thank him for hearing your prayers. Thank him from home. Thank him from wherever you're connected. Thank him from wherever you'll be watching because I know people will be watching this later. It is a message, Pastor Favor, it's a message that we should put on the whole of this week. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for the healing of our state, the healing of the nations, the healing of the church, the repentance of the believers, the repentance of the servants of God, of the people of God, our renewal, our restoration divine intervention, miracles, blessings like we have never seen. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayer. Lift up my two hands as I round up the prayer. Father, we cry for mercy. We cry for mercy. Lord, we cry for mercy. I cry for mercy for this ministry, this commission. All the sons and daughters of this ministry, this commission in Uyo, in Aquabum State, in Lagos, wherever they are. Mercy, Lord. Let your mercy release grace and favor upon them this week like they have never seen. Preservation and protection in the name of Jesus. Even joining mercies. Mercy for our state. Mercy for this city of Uyo, Aquabum State. Mercy for all the states. Mercy for Nigeria. Our leaders, our governors. Mercy for the nations of the world. Let there be medical solution to this COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. Let the intent of the Lord, oh God, not, not be stopped, not be frustrated. Let it not, oh God, return until it is accomplished through this COVID-19 in this season. In the name of Jesus. Father, mercy. Mercy, oh God. Over your church and over your servants. We want to see revival like never before. Jesus, he said that. You, you are the one who died and rose from the dead. You have the key that when you open, no man can shut. And when you shut, no man can open. Your church was not supposed to be closed. So therefore, we declare the church open. And let the gate of hell close. Let the gate of wickedness against your church, against your people, against our state, our nation, close in the name of Jesus. Let the doors of destinies and blessings and miracles open. Let the, the doors, the gates of schools open again. Industries, companies open again. Let the economies of our state, our nation, and nations be restored. 
be revived. Let president, prime ministers, governors, let them be humble. Let them repent. Let them seek God, seek Jesus. Father, mercy. Let this season not be wasted. Let the lessons be learned. And let men turn to God in humility. Lord, mercy. In Jesus' name, we are prayer. I declare you will see God's blessings of mercy this week like never before. Grace and in the name of Jesus. Preservation in the name of Jesus. Thank you. You will hear good news this week. May God cause you to hear joy and gladness this week. No pain, no grief, no sorrow, no tears. In Jesus' name. You are offering to give for the Lord. Please take it out as we bless it in your house, in your office, in your room, wherever you are. If you want to transfer it, the account details of a church is on there. You just can transfer it to the church account. If you want to give your tithe also, you can transfer it online. The, the, uh, our local accounts, the Nigerian account, there is international account. In case you want to give in dollars, or in dollar, or in euro, in pounds, in whatever currency that is possible by that account. Hallelujah. Lift up that offering, Father. Thank you for the privilege for us to honor you with our tithe and offering. Accept it from us. Show us your mercy. Show us your mercy, Lord. When David offered the sacrifice in First Chronicles chapter 21, Lord, the plague stopped permanently. The angel that was that had withdrawn temporarily when he offered the sacrifice, the angel moved away permanently. There was no destruction against Israel, Father. Every plan of a wicked to destroy our, our, our lives, our families, the church, our state, our nation, and the economy. We ask, let that wicked plan be withdrawn. We ask, oh God, in this season, El Shaddai, all sufficient God, cause the people to see your miraculous financial blessings, miraculous financial supply. You that raise the reverend and send the reverend to take care of the mighty. What can you not do? Lord, take care of your people. Let none be stranded. Meet their needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you for your intervention. In Jesus' name, we are praying. God bless you. Please go ahead. Transfer your offering. Transfer your tithe. The Lord will cause you to experience his blessings this season like never before according to Job chapter 5. You read verse 22 down. It says, In destruction and in famine, you shall laugh. And Psalm 37, verse 19, it says, In famine, you shall be satisfied. This season, you will shall laugh. This season, you shall be satisfied. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are blessed. Thank you for, you know, giving me your time. Thank you for getting data and getting connected to this online service. And when I say we're going to have a communion service and Bible study, We'll still be looking at this subject matter of the wonders of God's mercies and the secrets. Please do connect while we wait to hear the government announce that the churches have been opened and we can gather. But in the meantime, please do connect as we have online fellowship. Stay in fellowship. Stay within the boundary of God's love and God's mercy. Please don't let situation make you backslide turn away from God. Rapture can take place any moment. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Go in peace. The Lord go with you. The mercies of the Lord go with you. The favor of the Lord go with you. Goodness and mercy follow you this week. Let this be the week of your testimonies. The week of your divine intervention. The week of the miraculous for you. The week of your turnaround. The week of revival for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Grace for intercession like never before. In the name of Jesus. Whatever you lost, you, are, you recover it now. Whatever was missing is found now. Whatever you were looking for last week, you couldn't get. Receive it now. You are covered with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Our states and our nation covered with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of God, the sweet fellow of our ministry. Rest in our Bible with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, the mercy and mercy shall follow us. All the days we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. As we have another online service. Please do share your testimony. If you
you want to send it, text it, text the 0802316506, 0802316506. Or you can leave it in our page, Praise of the International Church, at the comment uh, uh, section. The Lord bless you. See you on Wednesday. Have a wonderful week.